Welcome back. Number 17. 17 for CYSA. Five practice questions to help you pass that exam. Let's jump right into it. I don't feel like we need to spend a lot of time with me talking. Let's let's get right into the question. Question number one, a major data breach has occurred and the organization CSERT is coordinating the incident response. Based on the log, which actions should the CSERT prioritize when coordinating with the public relations team, with the PR team? What do you think with that one? Uh, I know a different take on it, a different way of doing things. Uh, we're, we're moving in. It, it's often a misnomer within cybersecurity, especially for CYSA, that it's all technical. And it's not. We have to understand uh, from a from a relations perspective, from an organizational relationship, how we interact with the other departments. And one of those major departments is actually PR. Um, you don't have to be an expert at it, but you do have to have some basic understanding of what we're trying to accomplish here. Uh, all right, let's jump right into it. Let's see if we can answer this one. If you need more time, go ahead and pause the video. A major data breach has occurred and the organization CSERT is coordinating the incident response based on the logs. Which action should the CSERT prioritize when coordinating with the public relations team? We can see from PRExample.com to MediaNewsOutlet.com, update on the security incidents. Message, we are currently investigating the security incident. More information will be provided once confirmed details are available. So it looks like just a little email associated with it. So what do you think? Uh, avoid all media interactions until the incident is fully resolved. Oh, uh, that's a that's a wise decision when it comes into it. Um, is it the correct answer? Is it the correct answer? I I would I normally tell. I normally tell most of my employees not to relay any information to the media, regardless if it's been fully resolved or not. Uh, but in this case, it says avoid all interactions until the incident is fully resolved. Uh, yeah, so I feel like that's that could be a possible answer. Uh, B, disclose all breach details immediately to ensure transparency. No, this isn't normally something we would do. Uh, if you think about it, right, we start disclosing breach details immediately before we're confirming the information. One, it can, it can cause some harm to our company. Two, it sounds like our company doesn't know what we're doing. Um, three, if we do actually let loose what we're doing, it could entice other attackers to come after us. So definitely not going to be B. Definitely not going to be B. Uh, C, redirect media inquiries to the IT team for technical explanations. I mean, that's that's what we should utilize, right? We should 100% uh, go, hey, you know what? I know that I work in cybersecurity. I know we have a PR team, but you should just redirect all those media inquiries to the IT team. That's their job, right? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Definitely not something we would want our IT team to utilize. Remember, I hire an IT team because they're proficient in technical matters, not because they talk to the media. That's not what they're hired on to do. And so we want to we want to uh, not do that. Uh, and then D, provide accurate, verified information to prevent misinformation. Ooh, that's a good one too. That's a good one too. So we have two possibles here. We have A and we have D. But if we read the question, we should see a major data breach has occurred and the organization CSERT is coordinating with incident response. Okay, that's fine. Based on the log, which action should the CSERT prioritize when coordinating with public relations? Well, if we're coordinating with public relations, that means PR team is responsible for all this stuff. So should we avoid all media interactions until the incident is fully uh, resolved? Yes, yes we should, but we should also provide accurate verified information to prevent misinformation to the PR team because it says coordinating with the PR team. Uh, and so D, D would be the correct answer on that one. It is the better answer. It is the better answer. It's all about that wording. It's all about that wording, right? Uh, so A is definitely correct, but B is better correct because we're coordinating with public relations, and that's why. All right, there we go. Number two, a cybersecurity analyst reviews the following a NIDS log. Do you remember what NIDS stands for? If the phishing attack is successful, which of the following is the next step in the cyber kill chain? Ooh, we got to know the cyber kill chain. We have to know those seven phases, those seven phases of the cyber kill chain. So if we understand that the malicious attack was, if it, which of the following is the next step in the cyber kill chain, if the attack was successful, if it was successful, then we have to understand that, right? So, so do you remember the stages of the cyber kill chain? Do you remember that? If you do, easy, easy, easy answer. If you don't, well, you might be, you might be thinking, hmm, 
let's this might be a little bit harder than what I thought. Do you remember? Let's jump into this one, shall we? All right. A cybersecurity analyst reviews the following NIDS log. If a phishing attack is successful, which of the following is the next step in the cyber silk kill chain? Uh, we don't even need to know the log. We just need to know that there was a possible successful phishing attack. And if we understand that, then we can answer the question. The log has actually no bearing on this question. Uh, and this is typical of CompTIA. CompTIA likes to throw additional information at us to lead us astray, to make us waste time. Uh, not always, but in some cases. And in this case, that is 100% what they're trying to do. All right, so let's take it down from weaponization. Weaponization, this is usually number two, right? Number two on the cyber cable chain, right? What's number one? Well, number one is reconnaissance. And so we see D is reconnaissance, that's phase one. Weaponization is phase two. Phase three is delivery. Phase four is exploitation. Phase uh, five is installation, and step six is command and control, followed by step seven, actions and objectives. So which one does phishing fall under? What does the phishing, does it fall under delivery, exploitation, or does it fall under installation? And if you understand, if you understand the cyber kill chain, then you understand that phishing actually falls under, it falls under, um, um, oh my gosh, I cannot talk today. Uh, it falls under delivery. I cannot believe that I my brain farted. Uh, it falls under delivery. And so the answer is C. But why why is it C? Um, delivery is seen in the log, right? We see the delivery in the log. We really don't need to know it. We didn't need the log because if you understand the cyber kill chain, then you know that phishing emails are part of the delivery mechanism. They're not part of the installation. They're not part of the exploitation. They're part of the delivery methodology. And understanding that, we know that after delivery is exploitation. And that's the answer. The answer is C, exploitation. I hope that made sense. I hope that made sense. All right, there we go. Question number three, a security analyst is reviewing the following DNS lookup log as part of a passive discovery phase. Which of the following best describes the activity being performed? Uh, wow, okay, so we have our log. We have our query example.com. We have response ns1.example.com with an IP address and then a mail exchange server at mail.example.com. So which of the following best describes the activity being performed? Well, what do you think? Uh, let's let's jump right into this one, shall we? Uh, a, performing brute force attack on login portals. I don't, I don't see anything associated with brute force attacks on this one at all. Like nothing. There's nothing in here uh, that is indicative of, of a brute force attack. And so eh, A is, is thrown out. Uh, B, running an in-map scan on the target network. Um, we don't see in-map here, right? And we don't see it being interactive. Um, and so if we look at in-map, we actually know that it's an active discovery phase, right? It's active, it's not passive because we're interacting with the machine back and forth. Uh, and so in this case, we say look up log as part of a passive discovery phase. Uh, and so Nmap is literalistically ruled out without even thinking twice about it, because Nmap is definitely an active participant, not a passive. Uh, C, collecting DNS records using publicly available tools. Uh, that is possible. That is possible. We can see here that the the um, query is being made. It's providing us some information to it. We can see the mail exchange. We can see the name servers. Uh, and so that is definitely passive. So definitely something that we could see here, but is it the best answer? Uh, D, exploiting a vulnerability with Metasploit. Well, again, nothing in here to constitute a Metasploit uh, uh, vulnerability. There's nothing in here to um, tell us that there is being an exploit being uh, or a vulnerability being exploited. And so the correct answer is going to be C. The answer is C. There we go. There we have it. All right, question number four. An analyst is using Recon NG to gather intelligence on a target. Based on the Recon NG output, what information is the analyst gathering? Yeah, you kind of have to know to use how to use Recon NG. It's one of those things. Now, uh, luckily, it's really not. It's really not that difficult, right? We can read what it's telling us and probably figure it out, right? We can probably figure it out. Uh, let's let's kind of go through this, right? Let's let's look at what's going on. We see the command Recon NG, and we can see run Recon domains dash hosts, and then we're doing who is underscore pox p o c s, and the results p o c which is point of contact, John Doe at, at admin at example.com. And then we can see the domain example.com. Uh, so let's let's dissect this. If you need more time, of course, you can pause the video. A, 
vulnerabilities in target systems. Um, Recon NG doesn't look for vulnerabilities. And so that's not really something that Recon NG even is, is capable of, to my knowledge. And so A is something we get rid of, right? B, point of contact associated with the domain. Well, if we look at point of contact being provided, that, that seems pretty obvious. Uh, I feel like that's the best answer, but uh, is there a better answer? Is there a better one moving down the list? Because remember, we never want to jump in our quizzes. We always want to read all the available answers before we make a decision. Uh, see open ports on the target's firewall. Again, there's nothing on here. And Recon NG doesn't do that. Uh, D, default credentials for target systems. So we see John Doe and we see admin at example.com as a point of contact, but we don't see a domain, or excuse me, we don't see any credentials. Uh, in this case, pretty easy. B is going to be our answer. Uh, point of contact, right? Pretty easy. All right, question number five. During a live cyber incident, the following log from the CSERT team is recorded. Which of the following is the primary responsibility of the CSERT during this phase of the incident? Here we have a log. We can see incident declared critical. We see CSERT was activated and then stakeholders informed an ongoing investigation. Uh, and we kind of see just a, a timeline of events here, uh, more so than a log. So read through this. What, what do you think? What do you think is going to be our best answer to this one? All right, let's 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 knock this one out. If you need more time, of course, you can always pause the video. Uh, let's start with a reconfiguring firewall rules to block malicious IP addresses. Um, not not something. This is usually handled by a security team, not by CSER, not by our incident response team, uh, and so not not something we would utilize CSER for, right? If it was. If it was just firewall rules, we would just we would just go through and do it at the lowest level, not at our incident response team. Does incident response teams do this? Yeah, in practice they do, but not normally something we would we would put in with CSERT, right? Definitely not something like that. Uh, B developing incident uh, playbooks for prepare for future attacks. Well, the attacks going right now, uh, and the playbook is for future threats, right? Probably a little bit too much information in this answer, but B is in unequivocally wrong. Uh, we don't develop playbooks while we're handling an incident. We develop them after or uh, more ACEs than not before something happens. And we we adjust that playbook associated with the past incidents that we've experienced. As we learn, we grow. Uh, C, inform stakeholders about the status of the incident and next steps. Uh, definitely something that CSERT would do. Matter of fact, we can even see in the log that the stakeholders were informed and that it's an ongoing investigation. So C, very much a good answer. Is it the best answer? Uh, D, perform deep packet inspection to identify malicious traffic. Ooh, so we can perform we can perform some deep packet inspection and identify the malicious traffic. That would help us to identify the incident and clear it up. Another great answer. But which one? Which one's more? Which one's better? Uh, if we reread the answer, if we read the question. Excuse me. Which of the following is the primary responsibility of the CSER team during this phase of the incident? The incident has already been declared. The CSER team has already been activated, and the stakeholders have been informed about an ongoing investigation. So, which one would be more likely to happen? Would it be C or D when we look at this? Well, if you answer D, performing a deep packet inspection to identify the malicious traffic, I'm sorry, that would be incorrect. Why? Why is that incorrect? Why is it incorrect? Because our security analysts and engineers do that. That's their primary role. That's your primary role. Uh, as a technical expert, uh, that's their primary role. But the CSERT team, the CSERT team, they're primarily responsible for ensuring stakeholders are informed uh, and effective communication is ongoing about the incident. That is the response. That is the requirement of the CSERT team. That is their primary objective. Do they handle other things? Yeah, yeah, they do. But their primary goal is to inform stakeholders and keep communication open. That is their job. Uh, and so five is going to be C. Five is going to be C. I know some companies and some people will be argumentative about me. They'd be like, wait a second. Wait a second. I work on the CSER team and that's not... That, uh, yeah, I know. I know. Remember, CompTIA is book smart. Theoretical. Follow the book. Right? The biggest people that have problems with this exam are not the new people. It's the ones that have been doing it for a while. And so remember that what you do in practice versus what's reality, or I should say theoretical versus reality, often changes, right? And we see that all the time in cybersecurity. So if you're a CSERT member and you're probably looking at this question and shaking your head and going, that's not right, 
I understand. I get you. I agree with you. Uh, but, but, CompTIA does not. And that's what we're here about, right? And so, our answer is going to be unequivocally C. I hope this was helpful. We'll see you next time. Have a good one. I'm Dr. K.